pilgrimage for creativity. Each year in LA, 15,000 artists, designers and storytellers flock to Adobe Max to discover the latest tools they'll have to mix into their creative palettes. While we humans still fire the imaginative sparks, increasingly it's the guiding hand of machines doing the heavy lifting, from intuitively understanding the parts of an image we want to manipulate, to repainting a single frame of video and letting Adobe's AI platform Sensei apply it to the entire scene. Unlike the somewhat dystopian future depicted in the movies, Adobe isn't too worried about a landscape dominated by AI. In fact, they're betting the farm on it, alongside another emerging technology, augmented reality. The potential for digital overlays to truly enhance our real world, and yes, even cardboard movie sets, is creating feverish buzz. After all, AR doesn't invoke the same fears as AI and its Terminator-esque machines. But while futuristic AR demos are seductive, actually creating these enhanced environments has been beyond the wit of most of us neophytes. Okay. Enter Adobe Aero, a free iPad app making content creation relatively straightforward. Uh, I'm just using normal everyday gestures. There's still the challenge though of finding some decent glasses to eye up our new world and not just peer at it through our phones or tablets. But Adobe's confidence is unwavering. AR bridges the physical and digital worlds and truly has the potential to be bigger than the web. Scott, you made a very bold claim at the keynote. Back it up. Well, if you think about it, the web is something we have to go to, and we only go to it when we feel like we need something. But AR is always going to be there in permeating our everyday life when we don't know we need it. So for example, in your bathroom, every pill bottle has like information on top of it and, and every food has like calorie counts and whatever else. I mean, there's gonna be layers of augmented reality and they're gonna be everywhere all the time. A peek into Adobe's R&D also reveals its firm belief in AI. Here it's being used to blend a bird's sketch with a real bird's texture to create something entirely new. And this research prototype shows how you can easily animate the mouth of a flat image to the words in an audio file. Our technology works with any image, photo or sketch. But it's clear that such bleeding edge creative products can potentially be more sinister. In this post-truth era, deep fake photos and videos are becoming a serious challenge online, where politicians, celebrities or even ex-girlfriends can be made out to say or do things they never actually said or did. To combat this, Adobe has launched a system that records exactly which changes were made to images, when and by whom, so that a viewer can see an authenticated breadcrumb trail of edits. Technology alone cannot solve this. You actually really need multitude of pieces to come together. We have a role to play as a technology player. These distribution platforms and media platforms have a role to play, but frankly, creators also have a role to play. I think content authentication is definitely important, and it's definitely in its very first stages. The very fact that they've got the New York Times and Twitter involved is a very good start, but it's got a long way to go, and nobody really knows how it will take shape. One thing we do know is that AI is here to stay, whether we like it or not.